Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the other early English colonies, the New England colonies. So we talked about the Virginia colony, which is very much uh, something that uh, James I of England encourages, and the New England colonies are going to be settled by this other religious wing in England at the time, the Puritans. So remember that you have the Anglicans, you have the Catholics, you have the Puritans. Virginia is very much an Anglican colony that's promoted by the king. Then you have the colony of Maryland, which becomes a colony where Catholics can go, where they can live their faith openly. And the New England colonies are going to be places where Puritan Christians from England are going to go, who don't like the Anglican church, who are being persecuted by the English king and queen, kings and queens, and where they can practice Christianity as they see it appropriately. And the first example we have of a Puritan New England colony is the Plymouth colony, the famous Plymouth Brethren who sail to North America on the Mayflower in 1620. They establish a colony there, just like in Virginia. Life is very hard. Many of them die of a shortage of food in the winter. So this is actually a difference between the New England colonies and the Virginia colony. Colder climate harsher conditions in some ways, but less disease. So once the colonies have established, generally they have better health than the southern colonies, at least for Europeans who are getting used to these climates for the first time. So life is hard for the Plymouth colony, the first of these New England colonies. Many settlers die in the first winter. They survive again by working with the Native Americans. They find a supply of corn from Native Americans. A local Indian named Squanto helps them cultivate the soil, and so the colony survives. But it never grows very big. The most successful of the Puritan colonies is the next colony, the Massachusetts Bay Colony, uh, which is founded in 1629 and led by a man named John Winthrop. Like the Plymouth Colony, but I'm going to talk about this subject uh, in terms of the Massachusetts Bay Company. These colonies were founded for religious reasons. So if you could say the Virginia colony was founded uh, to expand English influence, to make money for the Virginia Company, that's not the focus of these colonies. They are coming for a specifically religious reason. They're leaving a place where they feel like they're persecuted, where they can't practice Christianity properly. And so they quickly, even though they might come as part of companies, because that was the way English settlement worked, they quickly get away from those, colon from those companies and become independent. So again, we can see a culture, uh, a theme of a culture of independence in these English colonies, in the New England ones, as well as the Southern ones. So these are religious colonies, or they're colony colonies founded for religious reasons, and that shows in the way that they're governed. These are governed as very severe theocracies. And this also speaks to Puritan theology. Unlike Catholic theology and to a lesser extent Anglican theology that promoted a church of both saints and sinners, that everyone sins um, and but then can turn and be forgiven. For Puritans, Puritan theology was based on the idea that people were either predestined to be saved they were among the elect chosen by God, or they were predestined to hell. Now, people could still sin, people could make mistakes, but there was no purpose of including sinners in your community in the hope they would convert and be saved and go to heaven. And so you just wanted saints in your community. And so only people who are in good standing with the different Protestant churches that founded these colonies had the rights of citizenship. So although you see some civic representation, uh, voting for civic representatives, that members of these colonies could have their say on the way the colonies were governed, only, those were only people who were in good standing with this particular uh, form of the Puritan church or this particular Puritan uh, community. Um, another difference that we see with these groups, that we saw a little bit with Virginia, um, but especially in New England, that distinguishes English colonies from Spanish colonies, is that the English are coming over to form a society. And so they come over in family groups. 
Remember how the Spanish come over? They're mostly men. They come in to make money, or they come in to conquer land, or they come in as missionaries, and they intermarry with the local population. English colonists don't do that. They don't have a vision for a society in which they've integrated local Native American populations into their society. They're creating their own less integrated, much more segregated society. That is an important distinction between English colonies and Spanish colonies. New England colonies uh, are not based on farmland that's fertile enough to provide them with uh, tobacco or to be, enable them to grow a big crop like tobacco. Instead, they're going to be successful by uh, trading and cultivating fish, fur, and lumber. So fish from the seas that haven't really been fished very uh, aggressively. Uh, fur pelts from beavers and otters that live in uh, Canada. And then uh, lumber from uh, the woodlands in the northern United States and Canada that had trees of an age and a size that didn't exist in Europe really anymore at the time. And so these are the ways that the Massachusetts Bay Colony and the Plymouth Colony will survive and will develop. Now, eventually, settlers within these colonies are going to react against the very severe theocracy that people like John Winthrop are imposing. And they say Protestantism is all about rebelling against authority saying, you can't tell me how to practice Christianity. So how are you telling me how to practice Christianity now, John Winthrop? And we see this in two uh, breakaway colonies that develop from the Massachusetts Bay Colony, Rhode Island Colony and the Connecticut Colony, both of which, again, are focused on increased freedom and independence. Uh, this time, civic representation, some early form of democracy and voting on issues relative to the colony, but it's not tied to being part of a church anymore. It's not tied to being good standing with the church leaders. And so that's how those two colonies emerge. During this period, we we'll also see the emergence of the New Hampshire colony and the Maine colony, both of which for a time are incorporated or taken over by the Massachusetts Bay Company, which is the biggest uh, colony and which is growing the fastest but both of which managed to retain and eventually restore uh, their independence. The last event that I'm going to talk about in this video is the English Civil War that breaks out in 1650. So by this point, we've had 30 years of Puritans fleeing England to, uh, as they see it, live under, um, live and practice the form of Christianity that they want to. Meanwhile, back in England, tensions between Anglicans and Puritans continue to grow and in the end break out into a civil war. Consequence of the civil war, or the first consequence of the civil war for the North American colonies, is that Puritans stop leaving England to come to America. So Puritan immigration into the New England colonies slows and those populations kind of start to stabilize. The Puritans end up winning the Civil War, at least at first. There's a, a Puritan English Republic that's developed, and then the English people get tired of that and they get rid of it and restore the monarchy. And the second important consequence of the English Civil War that stems from all this confusion is that English colonies in North America, in Virginia, and in New England become more independent. So that spirit and culture of independence um, becomes more prevalent during a period of chaos in England where the English government doesn't really have the power to oversee or to rule these colonies. They start to become a little more independent. Right, I'll be back with one more video uh, for, to, uh, to end off this week.